Oh, that has got one at last. Whoa! Well done on that. So that was that paid off then, didn't it? Well done. Yes, nice one. And he's coming up. Yeah, bring him over the net. Bring him over the net. That's it. Got him. That's it. There you go. Doing a good count of itself. There he is. It's a nice little fish actually. Better get a stock here, about two pounds. There we go. Gotcha. Want you to catch one yet too. Where is he? Over there, right out. Oops, he's off again. Uh, that's going to make a run for it in a minute, I'm sure. There he goes, yeah. Oh, he's off again. Uh, fish just down there. Whoa! Big fish, but they're certainly fighting well. And this is a small orange and white cat's whisker, so if you don't do well on that one soon, change you over. Yep, lovely little rainbow. In you come. filming glasses on so I can film it both ways. Put it back in again. Oh yes I'm in again, bloody hell. Here we go. I think I've got a decent fish on this time. He's about forty yards away. Oh but I'm only using a very light trace. Yeah. He's well away, he's a big fish they still going? Yeah. One of the a big fish in How big yet? Might just be a good one. Oh. Yeah. There he comes. Should see him in a minute. Whoa. Look at the size of that. That's a lovely fish, yes. About three pounds, is it? Maybe a bit more, we should see here. Don't lose him. Just took lightly in the fin there. So carefully. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Little lovely fish here. Whoa, there. how big is they? Okay, just turn the camera. We've got a nice big fish of the day. We should have wanted for taxidermy. Just bring it up. Yeah. Patrick's just got one on his own little rod. On a catch whisker. Coming in, get the net ready. Here he comes. <laughs> Not quite. Whoa, he's going again, that's good. Yeah, got him now. There we go. Into the net. <laughs> You've got to drag the fish this way more. There you go. Well done. That's your last one of the... That's a good fish. That's about two and a half. That's a nice one, isn't it? Well done, Patrick. Recording. Hold it up to me. That's okay, good. Put him back in then.
at last, having now caught our larger rainbow trout, and I hope it gets bigger yet, now I've found the spot, um, I'm able to have a go at doing one of these and show you, as been requested, uh, not only the taxidermy and mounting of the fish, but also the painting traditionally. Very nice to use airbrushes, but um, I, as an artist, have rather fun just using plain old techniques of brushing and so on. Although we will use a fine um, silver spray for a base paint on this fish. Right, let's see how we can get those effects. we we'll start off by what tools we're going to need. I'm going to need a close-up of the eye in photographs to actually show you how I'm going to paint this glass eye to make uh, to represent the eye of the fish. You can see there's an ellipse here and that ellipse will face forward towards the mouth that way or that way. We've got our borax here, sodium borate, the old-fashioned washing soda. In America you can pick it up from many hardware shops, it's called Three Mules I believe. Not so hard to get as many people seem to think. And the formaldehyde, which you may or may not need, if you skin your fish or animals really well, then you'll find that this, the borax, will do the job on its own. You don't need any other tanning chemicals as a basis. If you rub this well into the inside of the skin on the animal uh, and start off with it on the outside as well and then brush it off as it dries, that will preserve. If you've got any difficult little areas where there may be a little bit left in the end of a paw or the end of a tail, then injecting that in or getting that into there will also help preserve things in the head and so on. Other than this, all we're going to need is the uh, body that we're going to make later out of plastic. And we're going to also need a couple of knives to skim with. You can get proper fish skinning knives, but these uh, scalpels do me quite adequately. This is an old one anyway, not so uh, sharp. Card to set the fins and uh, hat pins to uh, hold that card in place. And that basically is all we're going to need to get the fish skinned and preserved and ready to wrap around our body former that we're going to make later with some plastic. So, sodium borate or formaldehyde, yes, the borax certainly is a must, and not that hard to get, and not that expensive. I buy it in the larger 1kg tubs because it lasts me for absolutely ages, but then I don't do a lot of taxidermy, only occasionally for fun. And once the fish has been prepared, the skin has been done, and the body has been made, then we're going to need some scissors, some fishing line, I'm using 8 pound here, a needle, and also to go with the body form and foam, some fiberglass wool to help pad in those areas where it just needs building out a bit. We'll also need a little bit of uh, filler to go inside the cheek of the fish as well when we've taken the cheek out. Cut down the lateral line here to the tail and just across here to remove the whole body in one piece and then clean out the head and all around the fins. Add the borax, need to keep the tail wet. So I put on some wet uh, paper towel here and on the fin for the moment just while I work. If it gets dry it'll start to split. And the first thing is to cut along this lateral line here carefully. Don't want to be losing scales on the fish so we've got to go carefully. Just cut into it and then work our way all the way along just through the skin. The larger the fish the firmer the skin is going to be which is to our advantage. Things with very fine skins are very difficult to do as are pigeons because the feathers are very loose as well and they tend to come away. So we've got to handle the fish fairly carefully or you can see these scales are going to start coming off and we don't want that to happen. We can scrape off quite a lot of the fish but the neater we do the skinning the better from the beginning. So that's our T-shaped cut, right down to the meat at the end of the tail, goes right down to here, I'm going to sew it right up back up to there again, and just to the end here and then down and across here. Just to the belly, not, not right round, just that far is enough and we'll be able to get round from there and up and round the shoulder here. Again, leave ourselves enough to stitch up with later. To there. That's fine. Now we've got to find the skin and start to peel it away. And I'm going to start from part way down here. It's a bit easy. Use my finger to work against. Just slicing in underneath the skin here. Try not to remove the scales, even though I don't need this side. Don't want holes in the skin if we can help it. So we carry on like that all the way down, all the way around here. You can see now I'm running my knife all the way along like that. I've got to this stage here. When you peel the skin back and you can it's a lot easier, you can start to get in round here to feel the cut inside, but do be careful not to cut through the skin itself, just pare it away. Even if at this stage you leave a little bit of meat, uh, better that than go through the skin. Just using the tip of the blade, just feeling away against the skin, paring it away, look. 
top shoulder of skin now away. Now I've got to cut down to the bottom. Then I want to remove at the tail end so I can lift that tail out and take the skin back the other side. Fully opened up. Now we've got to work through the fins and cut through those bones with both the knife and the scissors and to clean up afterwards. Then we turn the fish over to bring it the other way. The major thing being to cut the tail away. When we come to the bones that are holding the fin into the fish here. There's the fin. The bones are coming into here. We can reach underneath there with the scissors and just snip through them like that. There's away the skin from behind the tail here right down to the base where I've cut through the flesh to the bone and then get my scissors right down into here careful not to go through the fish and chop that off. There we are. And now at last I've got the tail coming away. I've got the tail away now, turn the fish over. I've got to work fairly quickly because I do not want this tail to dry out. And I can just peel back the skin all the way down. I've already removed the fins. If I come up and get anything else I can do the same. Be careful you don't cut through the skin. Just work your way back all the way along the fish. And you've got to this stage, hopefully you'll be able to start peeling away the skin, just by pressing against it and pulling like that, because you've cut all the rest. See what a nice neat job we'll get then. Right back till we get to the head, and then we've got to go in with the knife again, being careful. Right, now I've worked right in around the head here, you can see right down into here, right down to where the gills are, as deeply as I can get down, moving the fish out of there in a moment. So right down to those fins, right down under the chin, get everything out that you possibly can, turn it over. The, the skin is now um, just rolled up, folded up for the moment out of the way so that it's protected and I'm not losing the scales. Get in under here now, do the same, get right in under there. Need to get all of this out, as much of the fish as possible right into there, down and round, and then when you've got this far you can cut right through the fish into there and go down through the spine where well, you may need the scissors as well. There we go, mess and all, get it all out. We aren't going to need the gills because I'm not showing the gill rake is open. I haven't got to worry about leaving those intact or being neat there. And there we are, the fish is coming away, that's it. That piece, we've got no chemicals on it at this, at this stage, so it's quite edible. Um, this, even the borax would rub off anyway, wash off anyway, and wouldn't be poisonous. But now I can fill it that later, but I want to keep it for the moment because I've got to make a body that will ex almost exactly resemble that to fit within this skin afterwards. Now I'm just going to clean the skin up and prepare it, leave it in a plastic bag wet, so that it's ready for that work later. I'll put this one into a plastic bag for the moment. And that's a matter of scraping down the skin. I'll take my large, more blunt knife and just simply scrape across the skin like this, absolutely cleaning it up totally, taking all that excess meat off that I wasn't too good at skinning, and getting it right down to the actual skin. Nothing left at all except for that skin. There you see we're Doing well to clean the skin off now. There's the white areas that we want just like that. The skin done as well as I need to go. Now I'm working my way down to the tail here in a minute and I'm working my way into the head. I want to remove all of the interior of that head, the gills, everything in this case, and right into the brain and clean it out. And then I will use a little bit of the formalin just to work on some of the areas where I couldn't quite get all the meat away, cheat a little bit perhaps. Then, then I'll use a borax on the whole skin, um, pad the head out with some uh, fiberglass wool, remove the eyes and so on. And that's going to be ready to put over the body former later. Right, that was the gory bit because you can now see I've removed the gills, the brains, the eyes, everything out from the inside. Normally I take the eyes out from the outside but in this case I've totally cleaned out the head, got nearly all of the meat out completely, just needs cleaning out, wiping out and then the borax putting on and the formal in there and I'm alright. Just got the tail to finish. Brushing out done, nice and clean there now. I'm just drying it up with paper towels and cleaning out any last residue right up inside. Now it's uh, borax time. So plenty of the borax. Take a nice lump of it and break it down. Can't put too much on. Any excess will come away anyway. 
don't need it on the outside of the fish in this case. Just uh, any interior surfaces, eye sockets, everything. Plenty of it. Rub it well in. This is what's going to preserve your fish as well as a little bit of formalin if you need it. So make sure it's in all the cracks and crevices and well rubbed into the inside of the skin because this is going to work into the chemistry of the flesh, the skin. And this will preserve it in itself. Inside here, everywhere, well rubbed in, nothing left, no space left untreated. Absolutely nothing, it hasn't been touched with the, and rather had the borax rubbed into it. Huh? And you don't need any other tanning agent, this will do it, i found. And I've got fish and animals that have been done, and they're still with me after 20 years or so, without showing any signs of wear and tear or problems. Right, just shake off the excess. Now, this skin is going to start drying. It will dry from now on, so I want to get this wrapped up and ready for um, putting around the body former later. Just going to use a little bit of my formal in now in certain places. Just around here for instance, the tail end. Make sure there's just around the head and down here. A little bit of it doesn't really need it because the borax will do the job, but I like to be a bit more thorough and just be sure that where there is any doubt or bony areas that I've maybe not quite covered as well as I'd like that that is well done. Right, that's that. Now we wrap it that up and put that back into a plastic bag again to keep damp until we have the body form ready. We want to keep that nice and wet that tail as well, I'm going to get another piece of wet tissue for that to keep these fins wet. Fold it up again until I'm ready or they'll split. So there's our package ready to go. I said to you that the eye on the trout is uh, elliptical facing forward. You see on this rainbow in fact it's very very different and um, it's actually slightly elliptical downwards uh, and off shape there and it's also much smaller than uh, I remembered so I've had to get another eye which we'll just have to do and I put a little bit of black in to simulate it I haven't got an eye exactly the right size we'll just have to make do with this one next is to mix the colours and all I'm going to need is white a little touch of the yellow ochre a tiny touch of pink in places and a wee bit of the lemon yellow and there's a little bit of green coming into the eye as well Now styrofoam is certainly better for this job, but uh, we can make do with um, just ordinary polystyrene. And uh, the piece about the right shape here, and what to do is get the fish as we want him, position we want, and then simply draw around that and uh, cut it out both ways. And we cut this way, and then we cut that way to get the shape. And it wants to be a fraction smaller, I found, than the actual body because the skin starts to shrink and with the thickness of the skin as well, which isn't much but it's enough, um, you'll find you have a job getting the body around it. So I'll just cut down through here. I'm going to have to adjust this later. I'm going to go around it with a surform to round it all off. But it's pretty easy stuff to cut as you can see. Right down round. All the way down here. As I said, I shall be making it a bit smaller than this because otherwise it's not going to fit. Styrofoam is better because it's 
got a smaller, it's got a, a much finer texture, whereas this polystyrene is a bit bubbly and more difficult to work with. We get a smooth finish. Quite often, if I want a smooth finish, I will uh, use a filler over the outside as well. Now, having got it that way, we've got to do it this way. Have a look at the fish that way around. It's quite, quite thin, really. Yes, we'd have to take off quite a lot of that shape. Right, now we need to go and use the surform and sandpaper to round all these edges off. Right, I've got the white polystyrene cut and now I've mixed some filler and I like personally to now build up the body a little bit more to perfection and shape with the filler and give a nice smooth. Right, there's my prepared body. Now we'll see if the skin fits over it. With a bit of luck. I have to do a little bit of adjusting. There we are, that's how it should be. How the fish should go. But we've got a bit of padding to do here and there before we think about sewing it up. I'm just going to pad out the fish a bit. The eyes and the inside of the head. Ready to take the glass eye later. Up inside the head here. There we go. And I'll have to do a bit more with that as we fit the fish. Get that inside there now. And uh, this is where some of it's going to need a little bit more padding just to shape it. Give that fish just that little bit more back. And then make sure that these pieces are going to stretch and join up. Yeah, like that, you see. And that's how we're going to sew it up. Now we're going to, when we sew it, I shall sew from either end like that to try and stretch it tight. So I've stitched up the uh, shoulder here. I'm just working down now to bring the top of the shoulder across and down as much as I can, stretching that skin around. There's always a slight gap, especially if the fish starts to um, shrink a bit as this one is anyway. But that isn't going to matter because it's at the back of the fish in this case. You'd have to fill it and uh, do a bit of artwork if it wasn't the case. I'm going to fill it anyway later. So I'll just finish stitching up this shoulder and then we'll move straight on to working along the fish and get part of it away and then start from the other end again. There we go. So we're getting a little bit of a gap there at the moment but it won't last for long. So I know I've got to come down to the joint itself here. Watch your fingers when you're doing this job. I've also doubled up the fishing line. I use it as a, as a long loop rather than one single piece. It's just a matter now of going round and round. And I tend to do a locking stitch on it, so when I go round that way, I'll tighten up and put one round itself in a moment. So I'll pull that one tight, up like that. I'll put a locking one in by going through there. and then pulling that tight afterwards and if you keep doing that the seam will gradually join up. We've stitched up as far as there now. There's our fish um, actually stuffed ready. Now we've got to set it all, get the fins set, clean it up. I've taken out the cheeks by using a small scalpel, taking all the meat out of there. I just have to put a little bit of uh, borax into that now. <coughs> And then a little bit of filler after that, it will dry in there and deal with that. There we go. So the bore will do the job. <coughs> do the same the other side, and you can see all the stitching now finished. And then put the filler in. And then when the filler's in, we can set the fins. Now we just lift the cheek, and put some of the filler in. that cheek right up. It's a water-based filler anyway so it doesn't matter about the existing dampness of the fish. Make sure it glues well over. We can just take the cheek and push it back on. Just smear out the excess. 
I'll pin that down with some pins later. Just make sure it stays in place. And there should hardly be a join. The other side the same. That side I'm not so bothered about because I'm not going to see it anyway. All I want to do is just keep the shape going. Turn it back in a minute. I'll use up the rest of the filler just to fill up some of this joint while I'm at it. So it can dry off a bit. Smooth that down. I'll just get a sponge and double it off. Right, now we need to set the, the fins, uh, which is got an important part obviously. Pull that round a bit more. Needs to be a bit more underneath. It's quite a thin fish this one, even though it's four pound. Right, we'll set the tail first. Bring over my bits of car that I've got prepared for earlier on. And all we're going to do is spread out the fins to the position we want. Like so. Using the pins to hold them in place. Mesh is also good. Oh, this tail has already started to shrink a bit, so I'm going to first of all spread it with one pin like that. And another further up here. It's unfortunate that, as I say, this fish has actually started to shrink somewhat already. Unusual. I don't normally get this problem, but... Now this split we want to pull together as much as we can. Because if the split is dealt with now it won't dry as badly. Right, get those pins well in back up there and then we'll uh, want that to be slightly curving there then we'll put in the other card on top to hold those pins down and give us support for the next ones which I'm going to put in right through the same Next we'll come up to the dorsal fin, There's a firm bit of card behind that and uh, again I want a, a pin straight away on the top edge of that card. And that will hold that in place. Put another piece of card on top of that and uh, hold that one in place. And again, another one at the front. This fin down here will hold it out once, right through there. Another piece of card on top. And how we want these set is an interesting point. Whether you want them at speed like that, or set more out. I think we'll have them about that angle this time. Whatever we do, we try and make the alternate fin correspond. Right, I need to set the fish up onto something. and. Uh, Maybe this egg box would be ideal here. Yeah. An ideal thing to set the fish up onto for the moment. Like so. Right. We have to hope now that everything's set right and that's going to work. In the meantime, we've got to think about whether we want the mouth open or closed. And we've got to just push down 
on the uh, the cheek that we've just done. Yeah, it's got it. It was a strange eye, wasn't it? Because it wasn't just the ordinary lips of an eye, it was slightly downward like that. Up there, I think. It was a bit strange, but that's how it was. Now there's our trout basic. I think I've got a problem this time with the um, chemicals because I left it a while putting the borax on earlier. It's got a little bit wrinkled, which I've never seen before. But there we are, that's the basics before it dries and we can paint it. I want to use a bit of masking tape just to go around the fins at the moment and stop the uh, spray from completely covering them. I should just clean them off afterwards. There's the fins mask ready to go. I'm going to start with the other side in fact today and just spray this part and I want to put the wire through there before turning it over and continuing. I haven't smoothed this right down, it doesn't really matter to me. This is only the backing after all. This is to push this piece of wire in a loop right through here and out again. As the whole object is very light, the wire doesn't have to be that heavy to hold it and this will be quite thick enough to, to mount the fish. I'll just snip off the ends, just long enough, plenty long enough for me to snip them off later when it's gone through the wood, but for the moment just to make it a bit easier to handle. Turn the fish over and fit the uh, eye into the silicone. So for the moment we need to just lift out the eye because it hasn't contracted around it that much we can still get it in and out there we are just remember which way it was going just press that in a bit and take a little clear silicone so that's well moulded in there and it's adhering a bit and when I push the eye into that, that should squeeze out slightly and uh, give us the effect of the mucus around the eye. There we go. Hold that in place. These areas that we want the silver over now. Of course these Areas that have been painted, been filled, are going to need a bit more spray, need a few coats. It's a bit more paint where uh, the fill has been used. We've now finished the silver spraying of the fish and taken the uh, tape off the fins so we can see the fins nicely. We'll clean this up a bit later. We're going to use the palette of acrylics. We've got all the colours we want here from the pinks and reds and yellows yellow ochres and browns and blacks, a um, bit of water and mixing palette and down below it you see the pictures, the photographs I've taken of the, the fish itself earlier on. We're going to try and reproduce these colours and that's going to mean starting off with the yellow ochre here, working into a little bit of tint of green going over the back in washes and gradually letting it build up and then a through to the slightly pink glaze and the white at the belly and almost black, very deep green at the back. Now then we want the sheen going across it of the pink and blues and we've got our reactive colours over there for that. OK then stage by stage here we go we'll start doing the glazing of the yellow ochre first.
So you see I've been building up these tones. I'm now using yellow ochre and yellow ochre and white, having used rose and white, and painting in all these little highlights on the scales to get this feeling of the, the fish, after which I'm going to put in the reactive colours, those powders, into a little uh, PVA glue, paint over the top of this to get the, uh, the gleam of that blue and pink across the fish that you can't get just by painting it in. I can get pretty close as you're seeing here, but not as close as I would like. Right, that's got the actual base painting of the fish done with most of the details. What I want to do now is um, put over the uh, glaze of the pink and the blue to try and get that iridescent feeling. So a little bit of these uh, Perlex pigments which will reflect the light. So I should take a sm very small amount of PVA glue with water and add some of these pigments to it. Working towards it almost being done now. We've just got a few bits of touching up to do here and there. These darks, and I've lost it a little bit when I put on the um, washes, but you can soon bring those back again. All I need to do then is finish off the painted details and add a spray of the aerosol varnish. In this case I started with a retouching varnish and then finished with a uh, high gloss. I marked where the wires are going to go onto the backboard which I'd made out of MDF and then uh, routed the edge to make a moulding drilled through where the wires are going to go and pushed the wires through, bent them down and as you see I'd already put on uh, hangers to hang on the wall. <laughs> 